What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're taking a household staple and helping it reach its full potential. I'll be showing you how to make the best spaghetti ever. But before we do that, please take a quick second to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to hit that bell and enable notifications as well. And for the best spaghetti ever, we need some jarred spaghetti sauce. Just kidding guys, you know that's a joke. We're gonna make this from scratch. We need some tomato sauce, some San Marzano chopped tomatoes, and some crushed tomatoes. As always guys, specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below. There I am again with my magic on the diced onion. We're also gonna dice up a green bell pepper here. I like to cut the tops off as you see me doing here. And we're gonna slice around the core, leaving the seeds intact. Makes for a much easier cleanup. But as always guys, there's no right or wrong way to do this. So do whatever you're comfortable with. The main thing you want to focus on is keeping your fingers. So hold the knife however you're comfortable. Just give the veggies a nice rough chop. You do want the peppers and the onions to be about the same size at the way they cook at the same rate. Homemade spaghetti sauce would take jarred spaghetti sauce as lunch money every day at school. So please give this a try. It's so much better than that stuff in the jar. As you can see here, we've diced up one bell pepper and a whole yellow onion. We're also going to dice up four cloves of garlic. I'm using fresh garlic for this recipe because there's not a whole lot of ingredients in this sauce and my rule of thumb is the fewer ingredients that you're using the fresher those ingredients need to be. So go ahead and dice up some fresh garlic here, it's going to help your house smell beautiful as well. There we go, on to the meat we have one pound of 80-20 ground beef, one half pound of sweet Italian sausage and one half pound of spicy Italian sausage. If you're not eating pork, feel free to omit that. You can use all ground beef for this or you can use a turkey or beef substitute. We're gonna get our skillet nice and hot and brown up this sausage. You can break out the potato masher if you need to just to combine all of the meat there in the, in the skillet. Nice Dutch oven to work or a big sauce pot. Just wanna brown it up nicely. Medium high heat, a little avocado oil just to get the party started. Let me know in the comments if you've ever made spaghetti sauce from scratch. If you haven't, you're in for a treat, guys. This is so good. Quick little flyover. As you can see, our meat's browned up nicely. Once it has browned to your liking, you're gonna go ahead and add in your veggies. Don't add the garlic in just yet because garlic has a tendency to burn, so we're gonna add that a little bit later. We just wanna sweat those veggies down for about four to five minutes until they start to become tender. Say it with me, guys, looking good. This recipe makes a ton of sauce and you can freeze it. Going in with a little bit of worst word in the world sauce, about a teaspoon or two. I ran out, so I, you know, that's all I used. Uh, a little herb de Provence or a little Italian seasoning, whatever you got in the pantry will do just fine. Optionally, you can add a little bit of crushed red pepper as well for, for a little bit of a kick. Nothing wrong with a little spice in your sauce. Give that a good mix. Make sure all those flavors are coming together like a nice family reunion. Going in with that garlic now that our veggies have gotten nice and tender. This recipe makes a ton of sauce, guys, and it freezes perfect. So if you have a nice freezer bag or a vacuum sealer, go ahead and freeze this up and you can use it in the future. There we go. Now you want to make a little space for your tomato paste. I like to put the tomato paste right on the bottom of the skillet that way a little bit of fawn can develop and really gets incorporated into the sauce going in with about one to two tablespoons of that again guys all the specific measurements and ingredients can be found in the description box below for you there we go going in with a half cup of red wine i like to use dry red wine for this or something like a cabernet That's optional though guys, if you don't want to use wine, you don't have to, you could always use just a little bit of beef stock to deglaze the bottom of the pan. Going in with those chopped tomatoes, followed by our crushed tomatoes, and then of course that tomato sauce. As you can see, this sauce is going to be bright red, rich, full of flavor, not that burgundy color stuff you get in the jar. Just mix that in. You can cut this recipe in half if you don't need quite this much sauce. Going in with about two to three tablespoons of sugar. The sugar is used only to balance the acidity from all the tomatoes in this sauce, so that's why you're using the sugar, not to necessarily make it sweet. Also seasoned it with a little all-purpose seasoning, a little salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder, some fresh bay leaves. 
give that a good mix and then you want to turn the heat to low and let this simmer for about 45 to 60 minutes just let it cook down let all those flavors infuse and get to know each other oh man that's gonna smell good go ahead and cover with that lid put it to bed for about a half hour check on it probably about 60 minutes in total and you'll have yourself a fantastic homemade meat sauce you want to fish out those basil leaves as you can see the sauce is just getting to be a beautiful color there taste as you go adjust the season into your preference let me know in the comments guys if you like to mix your spaghetti in or put the sauce on top that's a big debate i personally like to eat mine mixed in but my wife likes hers on top so let's settle this so i can tell her she's wrong in the comments you guys better pick my side went ahead and added some fresh chopped parsley there now we're going to boil our noodles you want to heavily salt your pasta water and then throw in your pasta not literally matt way to go there once the noodles are done based on your package instructions and they're nice and al dente because you tasted them and you know that they're done we're going to add in two tablespoons of butter one because butter is absolutely delicious and two it helps the noodles not stick together now we're going to twirl our pasta so we can look fancy and get a nice little high presentation on our plate this is optional and I didn't necessarily execute it to the best of my ability because I couldn't find the tools that I needed but we use these rubber tongs and they kind of suck but don't judge me I won't judge you you guys know the golden rule there we go we got a little height on there that's what we're looking for another option is to just kind of spin it as you're adding it to the plate the other option is just to serve it up and eat it guys because who cares all right so now we're going to go ahead and add our sauce look how beautiful and rich deep dark color that is oh my goodness that looks good we're spooning this on top for the wife i think this is the worst way to eat your spaghetti but hey what do i know going down with a little shredded parmesan cheese a little fresh chopped parsley you can use fresh chopped basil as well if you want for a pop of color and for the money shot there it is guys a little pasta food porn for you now we're moving on to the only way to eat spaghetti which is mixed in going to go down with a little bit more shredded parmesan cheese because why the hell not of course a little fresh chopped parsley for a pop of color and to make the thumbnail look good and there you have it my friends all i need is my fork give it a little spin and we have to go in for the taste test because this was on the money oh man the eyebrows are going all over the place you know it's good don't forget to give your boy a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and that bell to enable notifications. And as always, thank you for your support.